Hi, Ted. Hello, how are you? I think you're blocking my video. Oh, how am I doing that? Let's see. Oh, just being you, I suppose. <laughs> Right again. There we go. There we go. Sorry, this is just as I was going to link in. I'm the only person here in River Falls, and somebody walked in oh. all hot to trot to book a cruise with Holland America. So I was trying to diplomatically <laughs> tell them I'll call them back in an hour. So, uh, do you pay for your Zoom? I do, yeah. And Nora pays for the travel leader Zoom. Yep. I'm going to shut my door. It'll okay. be a little quieter. Well, I had one of those New England cruises that got canceled. I had somebody on the, that last repositioning cruise. Oh, the one down to Florida? Mm -hmm. I do. Oh, wow. I just sent out an email about that, too, to Nora. Uh, I noticed Karen Malone had a couple, and then a, another one didn't have a name on it. It must have been yours. Well, no, it was, it was an IC who retired. And somehow that's that's where the booking ended up. And apparently that's not a simple thing to change. <laughs> so I might raise my desk a little bit more. So do you have people waiting? Or... Not yet. Nope. I will. I think Nora just sets it up so that they automatically pop right into the oh, I see. Um, okay. into the thing, but I'll kind of watch. You know what the fifth largest city of Columbia is? Ali. It's Cartagena. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, it does. Since I guess we're talking about the Panama Canal, that would make that would make sense. Do you know which port of call is a twenty-two mile long, eight mile wide island? Aruba, Grand Cayman. Oh, makes sense. You know which is a very dry and arid island? Aruba. Aruba. <laughs> Do you know which large lake separates the Pacific and Atlantic Ocean? A large lake? Yes. Um, well, Gatun Lake, isn't that the lake in the Panama Canal? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, which is the largest city we visit on our seven day round trip, New York, uh, Canada, New England sailing. Does New York count? No, no. That we, <laughs> well, it does not for purposes of my, of my question. Okay. Um, Boston? Do you know which is the smallest? Um, Sydney? Do you go to Sydney? Well, on some, I think we do on some of the one-way sailings. I think it's probably St. John. Uh, oh, which is actually a modern-sized city. 
Yeah, but I think it's probably smaller than Newport. Oh. And Halifax is, Halifax is 400,000 people. So okay, that's right. a pretty decent sized city. That's the size of the city my son went to school in, in Romania. It was about 400,000 people. Interesting. And that's a town that, of course, none of us have ever heard of. Yosh, now you have. <laughs> that's I A S I, right? I think that's exactly right. And they pronounce it Yash. What's that? They pronounce it Yash. Well, that's the best I can do. I might be a little off with it, but my son kind of corrects me a little bit when I say it. Um, but strangely, or whatever, oddly or coincidentally, when we call Princess IT, mm -hmm. they're in Romania. Oh, and really? Oh, that's funny. One of two cities. One is Yash. Interesting. And I know exactly the building they're in. Did you go visit when you were there? No, I didn't know. I didn't know it when we were there. I only found out afterwards. Otherwise, I probably would have. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. What I mean, that's literally a small world story. Yes, and then and then they're in another town too, but. Ah, uh, interesting is right. Uh, let me think if I can come up with any trivia based on my office. Oh, I'm sure you've got lots more trivia than I do. Uh, I always think of questions. Yeah, I find trivia helps me remember. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I should review. I haven't used Zoom in a long time. So you can put your presentation up if you want to. Uh, what was the name of the first Princess Cruises cruise ship? Patricia. Princess Patricia, yep. Yeah. Let's see. What was the name of the cruise line that Stanley McDonald founded after he founded Princess Cruises? Yeah, that you're gonna have to help me with. <laughs> uh, it, was called Admiral, it was called Admiral Cruise Lines. Oh, nice. Okay. Yep. So you don't have to be in Zoom. You just open your presentation and then at the bottom of your screen, just hit the share screen. I'll open it first. Yeah, open just open the presentation in PowerPoint. Yeah. And then just hit share screen under your video. You, uh, <clears throat> oh. oh, hang on, maybe you can't, just a second. Okay, try it now, do you have that green share screen? I can see it, well, obviously, yes, because I can see it. <laughs> um, now do you see it? I see a map of the world, yeah. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> see, we have some folks who are joining us, so welcome. Were you on John Chernevsky's call? I was, yeah. And his personal phone kept ringing. Mine just rang. I can hear it. Probably yeah. an auto warranty. Well, we were. We don't seem to get those on our personal phone as much as hmm. I do them on my cell phone. Hmm. Uh, and uh, uh, we were going to discontinue our home phone and went to do it with Verizon. And it would cost us more to get rid of it than I know. Yeah. So we still have it. I have it, but I don't have a phone plugged in. Oh, I didn't even think of that. We could do that. But then <laughs> call and still try to leave a voicemail or something. I don't know, maybe, yeah, maybe I have a full voicemail box I don't even know about. Uh, isn't it amazing how sitting at home now, for me anyway, and actually talking on the phone just feels awkward? I mean, we used to do that, you know, as part of life. Yeah. Well, for me, it's sitting at home and being on Zoom is still kind of like an awkward. Well, and well, I'm well, in the well, office yeah. today. It seems more normal to me. That's what. 
Well, we'll give folks a few minutes to um, log in and then we'll get started here about uh, three o'clock. Well, welcome everybody. I think we'll go ahead and get started and um, let folks who join us late just catch catch us midstream. But on behalf of Travel Leaders, I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar and introduce our guest today, Joe Sieb, who is with Princess Cruises. And Joe is going to take us um, to a couple different destinations around the world. We're going to take a look at Alaska and the Panama Canal and Canada and New England. And Joe is also going to give us a little update on um, Princess's return to service. So Joe, if you'll bear with me for one second, I'm going to just start this up here on Facebook Live, and then we'll be ready to go. All right, it's preparing to live stream the webinar, so we're just about to get started. If you have questions as we go along, you can type them in the chat or in the Q&A box, and we'll either answer them during the presentation or as we, um, as we go along. So Joe, the floor is yours, take it away. Very nice, very nice. Well, to start with, uh, Ted, uh, you forgot to introduce yourself. I did. I'm sorry. My, my <laughs> I'm name. Blank. I am one of the advisors here at Travel Leaders. Uh, Ted is a great host. We've uh, worked together on a number of these functions already, and we like to razz each other a little bit. So thank <laughs> you for having me, Ted, and Travel Leaders. Uh, over the years, Princess Cruises has worked very closely with uh, Travel Leaders and, and Ted's company and uh, have enjoyed a long-standing positive, great relationship together. So as Ted mentioned, we're going to talk about a number of things. And to kind of kick things off, I just want to introduce Princess or kind of reintroduce Princess if you're familiar with us already. And just uh, I'm just going to kind of go through a few slides here. We were founded in, in 1965. Before we started, before any of you had joined us today, Ted asked me a trivia question. And uh, um, I'll ask the question as well right now. And if anybody gets the answer correct, please, or uh, if you know the answer, I should say, please type it in the chat box. Ted will make sure that we know who you are. We'll get you a princess gift, okay? So I'm gonna ask that question here in just a moment. Uh, we've been in business since 1965. We're headquartered in Los Angeles. And we've been cruising Alaska since 1969. And the reason that's part of the overall introduction is because Alaska is so important to us. And we ha have such a long, rich history uh, in Alaska. And it's what we're best known for, even though, as you will see in that um, world cruise map, we are a worldwide cruise line. And really, we cruise every place in the world. And that's really one of the three main highlights uh, the fact that we do cruise the world, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Europe, South America, the Caribbean, of course, Alaska, Canada, New England, Panama Canal, uh, Hawaii, Tahiti. Uh, Ted, what am I missing? Uh, Antarctica. Antarctica uh, coming up on several sailings uh, where we have uh, uh, Antarctica viewing cruises and then Asia and Japan in particular. So um, we're really a worldwide cruise line. And we offer a very, very enriching onboard experience, which uh, is a hallmark of ours. And it's led by our onboard enrichment program in Alaska called North to Alaska. <clears throat> and then of course, uh, the last of the three main highlights I like to point out really is our employees and how engaging they are. Now that when we return to service, uh, our entire fleet uh, will be medallion class ships. We'll talk about that in a bit. 
you'll find that you can uh, ask for assistance anytime uh, via your smartphone, uh, smart device while you're cruising and an employee will help you, will find you and help you. So anyway, uh, my trivia question is, type it in the chat if you know the answer. And, and I'm gonna also preface things by saying, there is no Googling of the answer. <laughs> anyway, does anybody know the first princess, the name of the first princess ship? All right, so going on from there, uh, I'm going to start out with princesses. Uh, what we call our shared purpose. Well, we have some good answers, but so far we do not have the right answer. Oh my gosh! All right, very nice. What are some of the answers? Uh, the Pacific princess. Close, very, very close, but earlier. And part of the reason that's close is, uh, as most of you know, we if you're if you're old enough to remember the TV show The Love Boat. Uh, uh, which aired from 1974 to 84. Uh, and the captain, of course, Gavin McLeod, just passed away this past weekend, basically. So we're all uh, sorry to hear that. He was a great friend and sort of princess. But nonetheless, one of the two ships, the ship, the, the TV show was filmed on was uh, Pacific Princess. The other was a sister ship named Island Princess. Both of those ships have since been retired. Very nice. Our shared purpose as a company is to share our world, which is the cruise world, share our, our hearts, protect the earth, and create lasting memories. Protect the earth really means that we're going to do our best to reduce the environmental footprint across the world. We take that very seriously. And creating lasting memories are the really the two key words. Uh, Creating lasting memories, I guess, has three words, but uh, it's really key. We're convinced you're going to cruise and enjoy the cruise experience, the destination, whether it be Europe, Alaska, Caribbean, all that goes into the vacation, the shore excursions and meeting new people. When you come home and you share your friends with your friends and family that experience, then we know we've created these lasting memories. We know we've been successful. That's really what we're all about. Our three core values really stand out. Uh, and uh, I think right now in today's world, they even stand out a little bit more, but they are to protect, uh, respect and connect. And um, the connect part is putting safety first. We've always had that as our lead core value. Maybe it's more obvious now how important it is. And the third one connect is really, again, what we're all about with creating lasting memories. And that is that we, we are all about connecting with each other, with people, with who you're traveling with. And that's the type of experience we're after. All right, Ted, I want you to talk about this. <laughs> Get with me. I will. Studies tell us that you derive as much or more happiness from the anticipation of a vacation than the vacation itself. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing, and I think it's it's totally true, and I think that's one of the things that has been such a challenge over the last year or so is that it's been difficult to have things to anticipate, and I think the good news is we're in a much better place now where it's it's safe to anticipate, and, and getting that pleasure of anticipation back is just such a wonderful feeling, I think. That's a great way to describe it. I know personally how much anticipation means uh, I, I like to fish and getting ready to go fishing is oftentimes uh, more enjoyable than the fishing itself. But nonetheless, uh, keep that in mind. A couple of things that uh, just a couple of housekeeping items. We'll talk about Alaska first, Panama Canal, Canada, New England, three destinations that we chose today because they're, they're almost domestic. Uh, and uh, but for the most part, they are. And we just thought that it might be a good way to kind of reintroduce um, uh, us ourselves back into the marketplace. Uh, that's what Ted and I and, and travel leaders kind of uh, talked through. I'm gonna share a few thoughts about medallion class and our return to service. So Alaska 2022 is really what we're gonna talk about primarily. However, you may have already known that on July 27th, or maybe have already heard, 
we are going to have a series of about eight or 10 sailings round trip from Seattle, cruising north uh, into uh, what we call the Inside Passage, calling on Juneau, Ketchikan, Skagway, and Glacier Bay National Park, and back to Seattle. So we've been granted a temporary reprieve from the requirement of calling on a Canadian port. Uh, and we'll have these, uh, these sailings yet this summer. So if anybody is itching to go yet this summer, there is space available. It's going fast. We just announced it last week. And by all means, we'd love to entertain you. Uh, they're fully vaccinated, re required vaccinated. Uh, let me start over. We are requiring everybody be vaccinated to go on these cruises, uh, with the exception of um, uh, those 11 and under and those that have medical or religious reasons why they can't be vaccinated. Now we can only accept a limited number of, of those categories uh, in order to be called a fully vaccinated cruise and meet the standards of the CDC. So very nice. And if you've been to Alaska before, it's kind of a neat year to go. It will be a lot, lot fewer tourists than normal. Interesting observation, that's very true. All right, so looking forward to next year as well, 2022, and also be thinking of 2023. Ted and I know in the business that, you know, by virtue of the fact that we had no sailings in 2020, almost none in 2021, that 2022 is booking fast and furiously. And we expect 23 will uh, as well. And that will open up for sale sometime in July of this year. So by all means, uh, look at it a little bit differently maybe than you have in past years that it might sell out a bit earlier. But whenever you're cruising Alaska or thinking about cruising, we know the big driver is to see glaciers. So when you're cruising between Vancouver and Anchorage on a seven day sailing or Vancouver to Anchorage and up to Denali on a cruise tour, we always offer you two glacier viewing opportunities. This, these, these folks here on the left side of the screen on the deck, uh, the ship is uh, looking face on to uh, Marjorie Glacier, deep into Glacier Bay National Park. Photos just don't do it really justice. That glacier is about 300 feet high, probably that deep into the water as well. It's called the Tidewater Glacier which in lay terms essentially means that the glacier, when it calves, the ice falls off into the water, that it's a, uh, that it falls into the water. That's what, how a, a tidewater glacier is defined. You will see other glaciers on the mountainsides that when they calf, which they don't really do much of, uh, the ice does not fall into the water. Prince's ships were built for cruising Alaska with plenty of public deck area for glacier viewing. So whenever you're on a cruise tour, know that you'll have two full days of glacier viewing or essentially full days, a day and a half to two days uh, essentially. So a full day in Glacier Bay National Park, then a second experience, which is a little bit shorter, either cruising an area called College Fjord or Hubbard Glacier. And then uh, generally, uh, at least one, in most cases, two nights around the Denali Park area. Uh, and so any cruise tour, which is cruising for seven days and then doing a land tour anywhere from three to four to five to six to seven uh, nights on land, uh, that's how we define a cruise tour. So Ted, what number of nights on land do you, do you find that satisfies most customers? I'd say probably Four nights is probably the average, which really gives you a chance to have that full, full day experience in Denali, which, I mean, isn't it like the size of a U.S. state? Like the size well, it's, of the uh, park? It's just just immense. It's six million acres. So yeah, I guess that's another trivia question for another <laughs> seminar. But uh, it is six million acres. So the tours will, uh, uh, with limited exceptions, include a tour into the park itself. Uh, by the National Park Service. Princess has two different lodges around the Denali area. 
and you'll stay at either one or both of them depending on your itinerary. So uh, if you're interested and, and when you get ready, you'll visit uh, with one of uh, um, the staff and travel leaders and they'll help sort through which is the best one to go on for you. All right. We also- so, Joe, let me quick add too for folks who like uh, traveling by train, which both you and I do, um, most of the Princess Tours also have a really unique rail experience as part of it as well. Very nice. Uh, wildlife is another driving factor for a lot, of, a lot of us to go to Alaska. Looking in the upper left-hand corner uh, and going clockwise, uh, we hope to show you, I can just about guarantee on a cruise tour, you'll see caribou, doll sheep, moose and bear seem to be kind of the wild card. Uh, the Alaskan wolf is uh, uh, maybe one we don't need to have, uh, don't need to see or certainly not close up. And then whales, of course. So you'll see whales a number of times, most likely from the ship. And there's also a great whale watching shore excursion from Juneau that you can go on, okay? And in the past, I suspect moving forward, the shore excursion operator in Juneau has uh, guaranteed that you'll see whales, all right? And then our North to Alaska- I have yet to have somebody tell me they didn't see a whale on a cruise to Alaska. Isn't that the truth? Yes, very much so. Our North Alaska Enrichment Program is really led by uh, when we're in Glacier Bay National Park, a park ranger will board the ship and spend the entire day with our customers, explaining what you're seeing, talking about glaciers. You can have a private audience with them. This young couple in the lower right-hand corner are uh, uh, holding uh, real-life sled dog puppies that a real life dog musher uh, from Alaska has brought on board the ship while we're in Anchorage, or excuse me, while we're in Skagway and uh, gives a presentation on sled dog racing and his own sled dog puppies on board the ship. And they're a real hit. Libby Riddles, the first female Iditarod champion joins the ship in Juneau and spends uh, time uh, making a wonderful, compelling personal presentation on her life in, in Alaska. So there's really three different ways to see Alaska. One is a round trip sailing from Seattle. So you'll see my arrows. You board the ship in Seattle, you cruise north, as far north as Skagway, the port city for uh, the gold rush of 1898, back to Seattle. We always offer one glacier viewing opportunity either Glacier Bay National Park or an area called Tracy Arm or Dawes Glacier. And you'll see the picture of the ship again. This is that the same glacier as we were looking at earlier from a different perspective. Now you can really see how high that uh, glacier really is, how dramatic it is. And we can also see Alaska by cruising from Vancouver to Anchorage. Whittier is the port city for Anchorage. Uh, it's a seven day cruise. You can either go northbound for seven days or you can go southbound for seven days. On these sailings, which is the sailing you would be on if you were doing a cruise tour, uh, we offer two glacier viewing opportunities, uh, Glacier Bay National Park and then a second experience as well. And then if you're doing a cruise tour, you would cruise from Vancouver to Anchorage on that seven day cruise, get off the uh, ship in Whittier, in most cases board the train that Ted was talking about a few minutes ago and, uh, and tour anywhere from three to seven nights on land. You end up in either Fairbanks or back in Anchorage uh, to fly home to uh, end your trip. Really a great experience. I've, I've had the opportunity to go probably a dozen times to Alaska and each time I go, I come home and I think I can't wait to go back. <laughs> I was actually it scheduled. Is, it is pretty incredible. It is, isn't it? And then I, Glacier, Glacier Bay is just, I don't think there's anything like it on earth. It's quite, quite impressive. And, and it continues to be, yes. So I was scheduled to be on a sailing last spring. And of course that canceled, but I hope to go again. All right, now we're going to talk about Panama Canal a little bit, not in quite as much detail, but there's really two ways to see Panama Canal. One is by, if you look at the map, just in the lower left-hand corner, just to kind of depict what a, a, a typical, uh, one typical itinerary would be, which would be a 10-day 
round trip from Fort Lauderdale. You fly to Fort Lauderdale, cruise the Caribbean islands. You might visit Jamaica, Aruba, Cartagena. Ted and I were just talking about how Cartagena is a million people. It's Colombia's fifth largest city. Beautiful Spanish influence. It's, it's like a up and coming, up and coming kind of hidden gem city. Very much so. Tourism is a real key for Cartagena. Limon, Costa Rica, home of the Sloth Sanctuary, uh, which is uh, something really cool. And then back to Fort Lauderdale. In the middle of that, we spend a full day cruising through the uh, locks on the uh, Atlantic side, side uh, into Gatun Lake, which is an 85 foot, uh, you have to go up 85 feet into Gatun Lake to spend the day. You can get off the ship uh, in Gatun Lake. It's just a long swim back though, that's the problem. <laughs> But you can get off the ship, and if you're participating in a scheduled shore excursion, uh, there's one shore excursion that actually takes you all the way to the Pacific side. Uh, the swath of land that the canal goes through, while it's pretty dramatic to have created the canal, uh, it's only 51 miles. So you can uh, uh, go on a tour that takes you to the Pacific side. You can see the locks on the Pacific side, and then back to, um, not to Gatun Lake, you go all the way back to uh, Cologne, which is the port city uh, at the entrance to the canal and the first set of locks. So really a, a neat, uh, a really a neat itinerary. This is actually one I hope to go on myself this fall or maybe into the winter. And or, so that would typically be a 10 night cruise, right? And that's a 10 night cruise. Then you could, or, or you could do a, a 15 day itinerary. You'll see on the map on the right hand side, just depicting that would be from Fort Lauder Lauderdale, calling on some of the same ports of call, maybe Aruba, uh, a very arid uh, island. Um, it might include Grand Cayman, uh, Cartagena again, cruising through the first set of locks into Gatun Lake where we spend the entire day and then through the Pacific locks as well, and then back in or then into the Pacific Ocean and cruising all the way north to uh, Los Angeles in most cases. Sometimes there'll be an itinerary where you actually cruise to San Francisco, so. And what a, what a contrast oh. between the Caribbean and between the Caribbean and the Pacific. I mean, you go 50 miles through that canal and the, the oceans are like almost night and day in terms of the, the color of the water and the temperature and the, the culture of the countries and stuff. A little interesting history about the canal. It started, uh, the French started trying to build it in 1853 and essentially gave up and uh, Teddy Roosevelt uh, or during the Teddy Roosevelt years, we purchased all of the equipment for $40 million and it still took us 10 years from 1904, I believe, to 1914 to complete the canal. Five million, or five million, 5,000 men lost their lives. I think they're all men. Uh, and then it still took us 10 years to build the new locks uh, uh, from about uh, 2004 four to 14, or six to 16. So uh, really interesting. The first set of locks costs about the same as it costs today to build a baseball stadium. It costs 300 million. <laughs> uh, well, actually, I don't think you could build one right now for that. But 345 million, the new locks that were recently completed a couple of years back cost over 5 billion. Interesting. By the way, it's on my edition of a thousand <laughs> places to, to see before you die, my own book, on about 800 page 800 or so, the canal is listed as one of the thousand places to see before you die. So if you have that book and you're trying to check things off, this is a great one. Yep. Great ports of call, Cartagena, uh, Limon, Costa Rica, Grand Cayman in some cases, Puerto Vallarta, if you're cruising all the way north, most likely Cabo San Lucas. Itineraries vary a little bit from one date to the next. Um, so lots of uh, great uh, ports of call as well. Well, and don't don't some of the whales that summer in Alaska spend the winter off of 
Cabo San Lucas, so you could actually some do, it. and then some the go all the way to Hawaii. Play your cards right. That's right. That's right. But a full day in Gatun Lake uh, is really an awesome experience. Very nice. Here's just a couple of pictures showing the building of the new locks that were completed in 2016. Isn't that interesting? Wow. A little bigger than the Mississippi River locks and dams, aren't they? <laughs> you know, I live I live a mile from the river and I haven't been through the locks here. So I need oh. to again. Canada, New England, another great uh, destination to consider. We have two ways to see Canada and New England. One is a seven night round trip from New York. We port uh, in and out of uh, a, a, a brand new Carnival Corporation port uh, in the Brooklyn, Red Hook area of Brooklyn or a 10 night sailing from New York to Quebec City, one direction or the other. All right. And uh, just kind of using the round trip New York as a sample You'll most likely be calling on Newport. Maybe you can visit the local mansions. So, so they're cottages. They're not mansions. Cottages, cottages. yes. <laughs> yes. I don't know. My um, cottage doesn't quite look like that. And maybe Boston. And uh, I was here two falls ago and uh, spent the entire day uh, walking the streets of Boston, followed one of the famous uh, trails. Freedom Trail, yeah. Yeah, the Freedom Trail part of it. And, it, you know, my wife and I are walking around with a map. Two things. One, we probably could have found the map on our phone, didn't have to carry the paper map. Number two, about halfway through, we realized it was, there were painted directions on the, on the, <laughs> that we could have been following. Bar Harbor, Maine is a real dramatic port uh, with Mount Desert Island, Acadia National Park, uh, and then St. John, Newfoundland and Halifax, Nova Scotia. So great uh, ports of call. In St. John, you can uh, just walk if you want to and see the famous reversing rapids where the uh, rapids reverse. And Halifax, we, we port right downtown. You can get off the ship and tour Halifax really on your own if you want. And there's a number of great shore excursions, including one that will take you to the famous Peggy's Cove. All right, whenever you're cruising and where, wherever, uh, our shore excursions are, are kind of divided up into several categories. One category is activities and adventures, another is explore on your own. And that's basically where we would uh, take you probably by a van and drop you off and in an area, maybe in a downtown area where you explore on your own and then we pick you up at the end of the day or. Oh. Nature and wildlife is another great uh, type of shore excursion that will take you maybe on a whale watching experience in Alaska. Sightseeing and city tours is what most of us are most familiar with. Uh, special interest, maybe a, a shore excursion that takes you to a, a wine tasting or a local brewery, or maybe the JFK Live. Lob lobster bake maybe. What's that? A lobster bake out in New England. That would be a good one. Uh, and then a new one that we have occasionally in Ports of Call, and that's called Local Connections. And it's where we've engaged with a local, a local that will know that the best restaurant is two streets down and one to the left, and it only seats 12 people. Everybody will know where the top restaurants are, the top sites. They know exactly what are the uh, unique uh, um, features to see in a port of call. All right, then I'm going to talk about medallion class a little bit. Medallion class cruising is really new in the cruise world. We introduced it a couple of years ago when we come back to, to the uh, from our, our and return to service, all of our fleet will be medallion class ships. To convert a ship to medallion class, it requires 75 miles of cable to be added to the ship, 7,000 sensors around the ship, uh, all new uh, different operating televisions in the cabins, and you will um, pre-register for your cruise before you ever leave home. So in the comforts of your home, you're essentially registering 
So when you get to the pier, you'll have your medallion, which is what I'm holding right here. It's the same as the one in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. You'll register before you leave, we'll mail you your medallion. And from there, you will go to the pier and be ready to board the ship. All you have to do is show your passport, walk through security and board the ship. So in today's world, it, the medallion is, is uh, providing us with uh, new advantages that <clears throat> we really didn't envision previously. And it'll be a big time saver too. Time saver and also essentially touchless boarding. You will actually schedule your own staggered boarding so we shouldn't see the mass crowds at the pier. And uh, I'm gonna kind of walk through just starting in the upper right-hand corner and going clockwise, board the ship faster, touchless. You walk up to your stateroom door by virtue of having your medallion on your person, the door unlocks and you just turn the latch and, and walk in. Uh, you can find who you're cruising with at any time on your smart device. Um, so if uh, you're going to, the days of uh, leaving a posted note in your cabin saying, I'll meet you in the Explorer's Lounge at 2 p.m. are kind of gone. Now you can chat between yourselves with your smartphone uh, or you can just identify where the other person is on board the ship and, and find them. Uh, games to play on uh, on your smart device. The best Wi-Fi at sea, it's absolutely lightning fast. It's called Medallion Net. You can order drinks and, and light uh, food orders really almost any place on the ship. And then some new enhanced features are will be number one, this touchless embarkation and staggered arrivals. Uh, <clears throat> Tad, would you agree that the mustard drill on board the first day of your cruise is your favorite part of your cruise? You know, I, I plan cruises solely for the purpose of going to the mustard drill. I never look better than when I'm wearing a life jacket. You know what? Uh, so, of course, I'm joking around there a little bit, but <laughs> Me too. the all important mustard drill. But now uh, in our new world with uh, the medallion, you'll be able to watch a safety video on your smart device or on your stateroom television, and then walk to your mustard drill station uh, at your leisure before you leave and you're essentially checked in. So you won't have to all muster to get there. So that's a real neat thing. Uh, hey, it just makes the, that embarkation day more, more relaxed. Much more Health enjoyable. Pack and stuff, yeah. Uh, health questions will be answered online. Touchless payments throughout the ship. And real-time visibility into venue capacity. So you might be in the dining room and have decided at the last minute that you want to go to the theater. And you should be able to check into the capacity in the theater. So before you walk two blocks to find out if there's space, you can find out before you ever leave. And really just next week, we're going to be making a much bigger announcement about a new dining program on board the ship called Dine My Way, where you'll be able to make your own reservations either before you ever leave for the entire week, before you ever leave for part of your cruise, or none of it and make them while you're cruising. Again, on your smart device or on your stateroom television, or you can summon the help of an employee to help you out, okay? But it's gonna be called that my way. Joe, we'll, we'll share an insider tip about venue capacity. If you wanna see those cute little puppies on the Alaskan cruise, um, that's one to get there early for. So use the, uh, use the capacity uh, test or capacity measurement on that. Say, Joe, there was a question in the chat about the, the cruise tours and how staggered boarding will work if someone arrives from a cruise tour. And then I'm assuming that that will just kind of be built into the schedule that those folks will be arriving at a specific time. Uh, I'm not sure I fully understand the question, but... Well, if people are, if people are customizing their boarding time, but they're arriving on a cruise tour, with the other people on the cruise tour. 
Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. So their boarding so, time will be limited by the time the tour arrives. Okay. Sure. Sure. And I think that would be, in most cases, a southbound cruise tour where you're applying Alaska. first touring in Alaska, and then you uh, end your tour and you're taken to the ship. So in that case, you're not scheduling your own. You are brought to the ship at the right time. Yeah, but your luggage is also just brought onto the ship for you. You don't have to even worry about it. Correct, yes. Yeah. Okay, that was the question. Okay, very well, very well. And do you, have, do you have a couple of other questions? No, we still don't have the right answer for our trivia yet. Okay. But. Uh, okay, I'm gonna give a clue then. <laughs> it, it's awesome that nobody's Googled it. Okay. <laughs> what an honest crowd. Think, think of March 17th. Anyway, our return uh, service and how things are going to look a little bit. Health and safety, of course, are paramount. We've kind of divided things into kind of about six different categories. We'll have this staggered boarding to reduce crowds, enhanced sanitation throughout the ship. Uh, there's actually some sort of new high-tech spray that's going to be sprayed uh, every evening. Uh, responsible physical distancing when necessary. Uh, you know, a highly trained medical crew that will be uh, trained in uh, COVID techniques. Increased ventilation. The air will be circulated every five or six minutes and safe shoreside uh, experiences as well. And of course, we will be in concert with all of the ports of call or individual countries, what they're allowing, okay? But to start with, we're cruising from Seattle. We're gonna learn a lot. Round here from Seattle and we're only cruising in the United States. So uh, that's gonna uh, help us uh, segue into uh, more and more port intensive itineraries. All right, and then uh, as we kind of get close to wrapping up and just to share one more thought, I also represent, and Ted sells, uh, lots of Cunard, all right? So we also uh, just want to have just a, a brief mention of Cunard. Cunard has a number of great round trip uh, sailings in Alaska in 2022. Ken, are you escorting a trip? I am. It will be sometime in July, but I don't have the date picked out yet. I'll know in a couple of weeks. So uh, take note of that, folks, that uh, Ted will be actually escorting uh, a travel leader's distinctive voyage, correct, Ted? It will be, yep. On, on Kennard's Queen Elizabeth. Uh, from Vancouver North back to Vancouver on, uh, it should be a 10 or 11 day sailing. Uh, so if you're looking for a luxury experience, uh, this might be just for you. Great. It is, it is a really distinctive uh, cruise line. And uh, if you're celebrating a special occasion or you wanna indulge and just be kind of taking care of at every turn, it's a unique opportunity to do that. Very nice. All right, questions and a little wrap up. Uh, we'd love to entertain you yet this summer in Alaska. It won't be long and we'll be now making many more announcements about our return to service and please look for them. We're updating our website, princes.com regularly with anything uh, health and safety related. Uh, very nice. Oh, we look in the Q and A here. Um, ah, there is a question about: Is it better to sail uh, sail first and cruise second in Alaska, or cruise first and land second in Alaska? Well, there is really not a better way. Um, I have my preference. Ted probably has his, um, but there really isn't a better way. They're both awesome. There might be a practical reason to consider one or the other. If you're cruising northbound, you, you fly to Vancouver, cruise north to Anchorage, then do your land trip. 
uh, and then fly home from either Fairbanks or Anchorage. If you live, like, let's just say northern Was uh, Wisconsin or northern Minnesota, <clears throat> pretty hard to get home the same day on your return if you're coming from Alaska. But if you're coming from Vancouver, it's much more possible. So there might be just a practical reason to consider it. Other people feel they like to do the more vigorous land trip first, fly to Alaska first, cruise south, and come home from Vancouver. Uh, what I like to suggest to people, if you don't know which way to go, is to sit back in your chair and close your eyes and whichever way you're going in your dreams is probably the right way to go because they're equally as great. And the itineraries are essentially identical. You'll see the same, same things more, more or less. There's a swap of the glacier in one, but um, you'll see the same things just in a different order. That's correct, that's correct. Yeah. yeah, well, we're still getting guesses in there in our, chat for the um for the first princess cruise ship barb barb scarbo is doing a good job she has royal princess no sea princess sun princess which she's been on no well uh, didn't anybody think of march 17th what the, what the meaning of march 17th is should we should we let folks know give them the answer i think we should all right i'm going to see if i can share my screen here i found a photo so maybe Joe, you have to stop sharing your screen. Oh, okay. Well, I have to start sharing mine. This is pretty. This is pretty esoteric trivia, but um, there we go. So there we go. The answer is Joe. Princess Patricia. Princess Patricia. <clears throat> yep. Which... Named after Saint Patrick's Day. No, I'm just kidding. That part's not. But do you know I, who Princess Patricia was? I'm sorry? Do you know who she was? No, I don't. Actually. She was Queen Victoria's granddaughter, and her husband was the Governor General of Canada. And so they mm -hmm. named this ship after her, and um, that was the first ship the princess used on cruises to Alaska in, what, 1965, right? Wow, awesome, and, awesome. Yeah. Mexican Riviera is where we really got our start, our start and... Um, and now we're worldwide. So thank you everybody for joining us. We certainly appreciate your time and uh, hopefully we can entertain you. We'd love to entertain you. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Joe. And thanks everybody for joining us. We hope you learned a lot in this presentation. If you have questions, um, you can certainly reply to the email that you got with your link to this webinar and we'll get that um, email to the right person. If you have a travel leaders, travel advisor, please reach out to them and they're certainly happy to answer um, any questions you have. Or you can always feel free to reach out to me as well. Uh, my email is ted at tvlleaders.com and I am happy to answer your questions as well. So thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. And thanks, Joe, for the presentation. Thank you. All right, take care.